Hi everyone, welcome to Every Day. Today I am playing Windlands. I have just gotten my hands on the first jungle crystal. If I go to my statistics, you can see I now have one of three in the jungle and two of nine crystals overall. And over there is one of the others. You can see the blue light. And over there, I am doing badly at illustrating this. Over there is the third one. So I'm going to try and get at least one more of them before I go back to the hub. And I think I'm going to go directly from this one over to there since it's the nearest one. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm playing the Oculus Rift version of this. Um, I've played the Vive version as well, but I just don't like it quite as much because there's a lot of very tricky platforming and jumping in this game. And I find that the kind of the subtle touch of the analog stick is well suited to it. Um, there's also a lot of looking into the distance and the slightly higher pixel density of the Rift is definitely helpful there. Um, but the Vive version is very, very cool in its own right. You can use the Vive controllers to shoot out um, to shoot out your grappling hooks using your hands instead of using your face, which is a lot more natural and feels a lot more direct and a lot more like your character would actually be doing. Let's jump on this giant dead robot's hand. Go down this hole. There's a tablet down here. Hello, tablet. It's one of the easier ones to find, believe it or not. You can see the sun up at the top of this hole. I have to do a little wall jumping to get out. There we go. Okay. So in order to get back to the beginning of the level, you can either you can either um, just um, you can there's a control in your menu that's return to hub. You can return to hub and then you can re-enter the level, and that's a very fast way to do it. Um, but I actually prefer to just travel on my own because I feel it makes me feel more immersed in the game. It makes me feel like I'm really this character who is bound to travel only by grappling hooks and jumping and constantly in peril of my life. So I, I prefer to travel everywhere on foot. But it can be quite difficult sometimes making it back on foot. No! Ah, for reasons such as that. Sometimes it's actually harder to execute the same path in reverse. Usually it's a little bit easier because you're going down rather than up. I also like going back by using my own grappling hooks because there's a lot of very uh, make, there's a lot of very fast swinging around when you're going down rather than up. And that's definitely part of the fun of this game. Um, note that this is a game where you tend to get turned around and just have no idea which way you're facing at any given time. So I may face away from the camera for extended durations and be completely unaware of it. So if I do that, please forgive me. I will try and reset between episodes. Oh, what am I doing? Come on. There we go. If you wall jump just right, you can sometimes gain elevation when you wall jump. You know, as long as I'm back here, I might as well return to the hub and return the crystal that I got last time. So let's do that. So here I am, back at the hub. There's the gate to the jungle. I love in this game how the faster you go, the faster you hear the wind rushing past you. Um, it really adds to the Windlands theme and and it gives you a very, very cool sense of speed. So I'm a big fan of that. One more crystal deposited. Where's it gonna go? It's gonna go over here. So 
so now that this is over here, we have activated one of the time trials, the one over there on the left hand side. I'm not going to go to that quite yet, but it is definitely a very cool part of the game. I'm going to do the time trials in the bonus episodes after I get these nine crystals. Let's go to crystal number three. So I said I was going to go for this one because it's the closest. I think it is still a good one to get next. I cannot actually just jump across here. That is much too far. But I can kind of curve around over that way. Let's try and not die right at the beginning of the game. There we go. Okay, I need to get up there. As you can see, near the top there, there... Uh-oh. <laughs> I was not going to make that jump. Uh, near the top there are some rocks that are just floating in midair. You'll see there's no foliage up there, no sign of greenery. And that means we're going to have trouble once we get all the way to the top. For now, I'm just swinging from tree to tree. Sometimes you can get stuck in a spot where you're just kind of hanging from a tree and there's nothing underneath you but a giant fall. And then you just have to... You either have to just reset or you have to, um... Oops. Come on, there we go. Or you have to find another tree nearby that you can swing to. Alright, checkpoint. That's a relief. Okay. I'm so happy to see checkpoints in this game, especially after really difficult segments. Come on, time it, time it. There we go. There's quite a lot of shortcuts in this game, like I mentioned. Like, there is an intended path, which is the slow and easy path, and then there are the more athletic and difficult paths. Okay, where am I going to go here? There we go. And I'm going to use very few shortcuts. I'm pretty much only going to use them in the parts where I just happen to use them by accident or where there's like the slow path has a section, like a puzzle that I couldn't figure out. I think there was only one part in the game where I was just unable to figure out how to progress by the intended path. I will point it out later when I get to it. It is in the city. Note that this game, like, even though it is, it seems like a platformer in its essential nature, I think it is also, in a sense, a puzzle game because you're given a certain small set of tools and you have to use them to complete certain objectives. And sometimes you have to do things in a very particular, very organized way in order to pull that off. And it's like, it's not just about timing. It's not just about... It's not just about hitting the buttons. It's really about, like, figuring out what to do and doing things from the right position and figuring out what surfaces to jump off of and all that kind of stuff, which really makes this, in some sense, more like a puzzle game sometimes which is definitely interesting. It's, it's definitely not any, any very clear fixed genre. Um, and a lot of VR games are like this, where they're kind of genre breaking because they have to, they have to diverge from traditional genres in order to work in VR. Okay. I'm heading up towards the top. I'm making good progress. I don't think I can climb that trunk, so I'm going to climb over here.
At some points, you do have to just walk. Like here, I believe I can just walk up this trunk. Or walk up this trunk. What's the best way to do this? I'm gonna try walking up here. And your character, for whatever reason, is very good at climbing, very good at walking up steep surfaces, walking down steep surfaces. So you can definitely take advantage of that. And you know this game, this is one of those games that starts out as a very simple demo and really finds its way and matures into a very compelling full game. And like it's still a relatively short game, but I think it's totally worth, it's totally worth the price that they ask you to pay for it. And it definitely had some genuinely emotional moments for me. Moments of shock, moments of wonder. And that's what makes it, that's what makes it an experience. And it's an experience that would be very, very hard to get on a monitor. Okay, where am I headed? Up there. Oh god. <laughs> this is one of those experiences of dread. Where I have to stop depending on my grappling hooks so much. And start depending on my jumping skills. And this is where I'm glad I have an analog stick. Oh god. Okay. I'm gonna try wall jumping off this wall here. See if that does it. There we go. The wall jumping becomes very, very important as you progress in the game. Oh god, a checkpoint. Thank god. Okay. Okay. Where to next? So as you can see, suddenly we are above the elevation where trees grow. We have passed the tree line and it's all jumping from here. So I can put my grappling hooks away because I'm not going to need them. Oh boy. Okay, this is going to be tough. Look how far down it is. You can really get the sense of like... Like a real sense of vertigo looking over one of these edges. And just seeing this drop of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet. It's enough to intimidate anyone, really. So I just got a checkpoint, so I'm going to go ahead and try and get that tablet over there. I think I can do it. I can show off my jumping skills. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. You have to aim very carefully. Um, just like Mario, you can change your direction in midair with your analog stick, which will be very important. Not just your direction, but also your velocity. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Oh, shit. So close. So close. That's fine. See, now it's personal. I'm getting that tablet. I don't care. I don't care if I go overtime. I don't care what anyone thinks. The tablet is mine. Come on. Okay. I'm gonna have to get a running start. Ready, set. Go, oh, I got it. Fuck yeah. I don't know who put these tablets here, but fuck those guys because I got their stupid tablet. At this point I can just hit Y to teleport back to the last checkpoint. You keep everything that you've earned, that you've collected when you teleport. So you can often use that to do shortcuts where you grab a tablet and just jump back. Rather than trying to jump back um, the hard way. Okay, time for some wall jumps. Oh, actually no wall jumps required here. Oh, here we go. So here I could either jump up this side or I could just wall jump. And that, that's an example of one of the parts of the game that has an easy path and a hard path, but the hard path's a little bit quicker. Okay, I'm almost there. I'm just gonna have to do a wall jump here. 
Let's go. Okay. I'm on top. I can see the grass. Almost there. Almost there. It's within reach. But the last part is the hardest. Ugh. Come on. Come on. Oh god. All these jumps look like they're too far. But I know I can do it. I find it very useful when you're figuring out your speed to just time how many of your own steps you hear with the audio. Because when you get a running start, every step adds to your speed. And of course, the more speed you have, the more horizontal velocity you start out with. Okay. Ready, set, go! Okay, I made it. I made it. Okay. I'm not gonna try and get all the way over there. I think I'm gonna try for this little ledge. Actually, I'm gonna try and get over... Yeah, that was no problem. I got all the way over here. Okay, some wall jumping will be required here. Oh god. Okay. This is the last part. This is the very last part. I can do this. I can do this. Oh, damn it. I know I can do this. Let's just run up against this wall. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. And then I just need to jump against this this little outcrop here. Damn it, no. Okay, at least I didn't die. And this is what I mean when it becomes like a puzzle game. You have to jump against very particular surfaces so you can bounce off of them. You have to jump from a very particular position and you have to kind of memorize all that so that you can try it again next time. I hear it. I hear it. The crystal. At last. Okay, so the robots appear to be using grappling hooks, and they appear to be exploding. Oh. Hey robot, what you doing? So did the robots use grappling hooks just like me? Wouldn't they need like super large grappling hooks? Oh, it's got it. It grabbed it. It's got the spear. Can you imagine how much damage that thing could do if it just started swinging that spear around? It could destroy entire, like, islands. Okay, it's got the spear, it's aimed up at the sky, it's shooting its light up. It's very, very ominous, very, um... What's the word? It's, it's kind of... It has a nobility to it. Like, the robot seems... I feel like the robots are good guys, and like... They're fighting some kind of bad force, and like it's raising its spear to the sky to declare it's ready for battle. I actually have no idea what's going on. There's no uh, written plot in this game. There's no text explanation of anything. All you ever get are these little pictorial things and those little cutscenes with the robots. But from the fact that they are all kind of trying and then exploding, I feel like they are definitely, you know, they are... They are fighting against powerful odds and overcoming them. I wonder if I'm a robot. What if I, I have grappling hooks and they have grappling hooks because I'm also one of the robots? What if every time I fall to the desert floor, I explode and I get replaced with a new robot back at the checkpoint, like it assembles a new one with all my memories? That could totally be what's actually happening. And like when I hit the Y button, I self-destruct and it assembles a new robot with my memories. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I might just be a regular person who has wandered into this land of wind. Regardless, this has been crystal number three. I have now got two of the three jungle crystals, and I should be able to open the way to the city when I get back to the hub. So, I will see you guys next time. And everybody have a great... every day.